The belief that we can die from a broken heart exists across time and culture. Over the centuries, the term broken heart has actually been used frequently to refer to people who pass away after some kind of emotional trauma, usually the death of a loved one. Clearly, it suggests a strong relationship between our emotional state and, and our heart. Dr. Alain Wittstein has developed a clinical understanding of a related condition sometimes called broken heart syndrome. The condition that's probably getting the most press right now is something that we call stress cardiomyopathy. This is an, another name for broken heart syndrome. However, convincing his peers that mythology might be scientific fact has been difficult. When I was walking around talking about broken heart syndrome, uh, that here's this condition where emotions can affect the strength of your heart acutely, suddenly. And initially, I had a lot of skepticism. And there were a lot of people who found that kind of amusing. On the outskirts of Baltimore, Pat Massoff had no history of heart problems. This would change after devoting herself to the care of her aging mother. I had a really good and close relationship with my mother. She developed a brain tumor. The doctor told us that she probably wouldn't live for much more than six weeks or so. The last night before she died, we just talked to her and um, caressed her and tried to keep her comfortable. She died a half an hour later, and, and um, you know, it, was, it was a shock, even though I knew it was coming. It was a shock. That's when I started crying, of course, hysterically, but we're all crying, and, and that's when the pain started. For Pat, the emotional trauma of losing someone so dear appeared to trigger a life-threatening heart attack. I went to see my doctor, called her up, and she said, come in immediately. And they did the angiogram and um, found out that I had no blockage at all. It was like, actually, I was in pretty good shape. And that's when I met Dr. Wistine. In patients with broken heart syndrome, typically patients' arteries are completely normal. There are no blood clots in the arteries. The heart during uh, people who are having stress cardiomyopathy actually takes on a very unusual shape where the, what we call the base of the heart, the bottom part of the, of the heart, is squeezing normally. Uh, but the middle sections and the tip of the heart are not squeezing well at all. And this gives almost, if you can imagine, a ballooning-like uh, appearance to the heart. Patients with heart attacks do not have this shape and so we're now quite quite familiar with looking at the heart muscle shape and saying that's broken heart syndrome versus a, a true heart attack. The way he explained it is that um, sometimes some people can have an, a, a very strong emotional experience and um, there are hormones, adrenaline, that just in massive amounts attacks the heart and kind of stuns it and the heart doesn't react properly, can't pump like it normally does, and that's what causes the chest pains. Adrenaline and, and noradrenaline, these are the two major stress hormones in the body that are released by the nerves uh, that surround our heart and that are also released by the adrenal gland when we're, re when we're subjected to some kind of stress. Uh, we have measured here at Hopkins the blood levels of these hormones in patients who come in with stress cardiomyopathy, and they're very elevated, much more so than patients who come in with heart attacks. And some of these patients end up in our intensive care unit, and if they were not in that intensive care unit, uh, could die from complications of the syndrome. However, once the patient's emotional state is stabilized, something miraculous happens. And then suddenly the heart starts to wake up. And most people with broken heart syndrome, within two or three weeks of coming into the hospital, will have a completely normal heart muscle again. I did not ever anticipate that the effect of her finally dying would be that great, would be that strong. Although no longer life-threatening, Pat continues to experience acute episodes where her feelings hurt her heart. 